Hello and welcome to Business on the Wire. I'm Mitali Mukherjee. Newspapers and websites have had this face splashed all over them for some weeks now in what seems to be an endless game of cat and mouse between Indian authorities and Mehul Choksi. But who is Mehul Choksi and why is this one of the biggest financial scams India has seen? I'm going to walk you through the twists and turns in this Bollywood style story today. Born and educated in Palampur, Gujarat, Mehul Choksi started his career in the gems and jewellery business in 1975. He took over the leadership of Kitanjali Gems from his father, Chinu Bhai Choksi, in 1985. At that time, the firm was focused on rough and polished diamonds. The years that followed, however, saw Kitanjali Gems spread its export footprint across Belgium, the US, West Asia, Japan, China, most of um, Asia as well. It was only in the 90s that Choksi decided it was time to pivot. Sensing a massive retail opportunity, Gitanjali Gems then launched its own jewellery brand called Jili in 1994. The next 10 years actually saw Gitanjali expand its retail footprint at home and abroad and by 2016, Gitanjali had widespread uh, stores, shopping shops, franchise outlets. They were growing fast, spread across 200 cities, 3000 points of sale. They realized this was also a business where margins were higher and high profile brand ambassadors from Bollywood like Aishwarya Rai, Katrina Kaif and Kareena Kapoor then added sheen to this brand. Some reports even indicate that in 2008, after Katrina Kaif was appointed Nakshatra's brand ambassador, their sales grew over 60% in less than a year. In fact, famously in a 2009 interview to Forbes, Choksi said the next LVMH will be born out of India, a reference to the international luxury brand Louis Vuitton. Ambitions turned to the stock market. Soon, the retailer was eyeing acquisitions abroad and planning to get listed. In fact, in 2006, Gitanjali raised nearly 330 crores from the stock market. Their draft prospectus said the money would be used to set up additional diamond and jewellery manufacturing facilities in Mumbai. At the proposed Gems and Jewellery Special Economic Zone or SEZ in Hyderabad and also continue to expand retail operations. It was a period of both high spending and high raising. The firm issued FCCBs or foreign currency bonds worth over $100 million and they went on to sign a bunch of joint ventures and distribution agreements with foreign brands to retail their products in India and overseas. Gitanjali also continued to strengthen its association with retailers, splurging on acquisitions. For instance, in 2006 alone, they spent 200 crores to acquire close to 100 stores of the US-based Samuels. In November 2007, they bought out another US-based speciality retailer called Rogers. And in 2008, Gitanjali increased its stake to 100% in the De Beers-owned Nakshatra brand, which was already being sold through many of their stores in India. By 2011, they had acquired four Italian brands from a unit of Dubai-based Damas International. They also had, at that point, a minority stake in a Japanese jewelry chain. Kitanjali was shining like a diamond. At its peak in 2013, the Kitanjali stock was trading at over 600 rupees a share. But like every peak came the fall. In July 2013, SEBI as well as the bosses NSCBSC and MCX decided to suspend unique client codes of 26 entities, including Kitanjali Gems's managing director, from trading for six months because of or suspected of market manipulation. In fact, the market regulator SEBI and the bosses had barred Gitanjali Gems' promoter Mehul Choksi and 25 in, uh, other entities in relation with suspected market manipulation. That followed an investigation carried out by SEBI and by the NSE or the National Stock Exchange into the trading activities of Prime Broking Company Limited and trading in Gitanjali Gems by these entities. Alongside, the Reserve Bank was beginning to get more and more worried about rising NPAs or bad loans and they began tightening rules for restructuring of loans along with other checks and balances. The news portal Scroll points to a July 2013 note from credit rating agency CARE that said, and I quote, 
stressed liquidity position of Gitanjali Gems as evidenced by the full utilization of existing working capital limits, which along with the recent RBI guidelines on gold import for domestic purpose would further put pressure on its liquidity position. CARE also takes into account the erosion in share price and the market capitalization of the company in the last two weeks of June. This, in CARE's opinion, would have a weakening effect on financial flexibility and indeed on liquidity. The timing was also bad with a prolonged slump in domestic gold demand. Choksi began the very sticky process of restructuring to bring down costs and focus on diamond jewellery and exports. What are the cases in which Mehul Choksi has been booked? Choksi is facing criminal proceedings by both the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate. The CBI had first named Choksi and his firms, including Gitanjali Gems, along with others in 2018, based on a complaint received by Punjab National Bank for alleged issuance of fraudulent letters of undertaking in their favour. That actually caused losses and massive ones to the bank. Following that, the ED, or the, Enforce in the Enforcement Directorate, also filed a complaint alleging that Choksi and others were involved in money laundering the proceeds of crime in overseas accounts. Choksi has been booked under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act and other uh, sections pertaining to cheating and criminal conspiracy. Similar cases, of course, have been filed against his nephew, Nirav Modi. Where do things stand now? Choksi fled the country on January 7, 2018, just days before the PNB scam came to light. He's been a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda since 2018, even as Indian agencies have got an Interpol red notice issued against him and an extradition request was sent to Antigua. The authorities in Antigua are already involved in a legal battle to revoke his citizenship. Cut to recent dramatic developments in Dominica. While fingers are being pointed in different directions, including that this was an Indian operation to nab Choksi, his lawyers say Choksi was, and I quote, kidnapped or abducted and brought to Dominica against his will, where he was, and again in quotes, beaten and tortured. Denied bail by the High Court in Rousseau, Choksi remains a patient at the island's main hospital. Where will the next few twists and turns take the chase of this diamond mobile? Will Indian authorities be able to successfully extradite him? On that, track record speaks louder than any government release will. In recent high-profile cases like Vijay Malia or Choksi's own nephew, Nirav Modi, extradition attempts so far have been unsuccessful. The wait for Mehul Choksi may prove to be as long. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.